Siamo con il nostro allenatore della squadra eh, norvegese, peraltro molto appassionato d'Italia, poi gli chiederemo successivamente di cosa appassionato per l'Italia. <ride> Comunque, no, prima cosa che um, volevo chiedergli, um, how do you plan the, the training and uh, if all the athletes have the same plan during the, the training and uh, uh, if uh, they have only a peak of uh, shape or two peak of shape yeah uh, we start planning the season uh, often last year the early in last year we start planning this season because it's a very important season it's the olympic games so we have thought about this season for quite a long time uh, and um, uh, olympic games take place in altitude so we needed to find places like uh, Paso Lavoise to uh, to train in altitude to be able to compete at the highest level in Beijing uh, so um, and of course we, we have had quite a success the last seasons with with the plans that we have had before uh, so this season we have sort of a combined plan of, of what we have done quite well the last season by with being a lot in Norway, doing mostly the training camps home, uh, but we have added uh, altitude training, uh, especially now, uh, August, September, then we come back uh, in December and we will stay in uh, uh, Cesaralm uh, until the Olympic Games, so um, that's sort of uh, uh, in general the planning process. and. Uh, uh the next question was uh, um, if they have one or two peaks during the season and and this year probably they need two peaks uh, because the, the it's hard to be at, on the Norwegian squadra uh, for uh, for the Olympic Games uh, with eight we have possibly uh, or we have only opportunity to t uh, to um, have eight guys uh, and um, then they need to be in good shape in uh, in from middle of November until middle of December because then we we close the the process of, of picking the team um, and then they probably will train uh, a lot during uh, Christmas and January uh, some may go the tour de ski uh, some probably will will not participate, but uh, it all depends on the results uh, in the start. And of course, the second peak is in the Olympics, of course. What do you know about the track of uh, Beijing? Uh, we know some something, but uh, it would be preferable to have been there before, of course. But uh, the the COVID situation has not uh, made it easy for anybody so uh, it's it's the same for every nation mm, uh, except uh, China so we, we are uh, we are uh, sort of uh, not thinking so much about it we know we have seen uh, maps we have seen uh, sort of what we need uh, hopefully the covid situation uh, gets better so that we are able to go there in end of January and not come directly to the Olympic Games. Can you describe a, a typical day of training during uh, a camp? Yeah, like here in Lavasse we yeah, we eat breakfast at uh, seven, 7 o'clock and then we train for maybe two and a half to three hours uh, in the morning. It depends on on what we're doing if we're doing a easy session maybe three hours if it's a hard session maybe maybe two uh, and then you have lovely pasta here in Italy so the, we eat a lot of pasta in the middle of the day and and uh, the athletes uh, often rest take a nap uh, or play some cards or uh, something and then we go training around five o'clock in the, the evening again so so every day is is two training sessions and uh, uh, a lot of pasta <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we, we had a, a meeting about cross-country here in Italy um, Marcus Kramer participated 
and uh, he told uh, that three things are important uh, for a coach simplicity um, uh, the relationship be be between uh, him and the athlete and uh, mm, he told uh, that the focus uh, to be on uh, should be on the athletes and not on the uh, coach ideas what do you think yeah I, I totally agree with Marcus on those three things uh, the relationships between uh, the athletes and the coach is uh, very important uh, because if you don't have a good relationship you you, you tend to uh, the athletes will work against you you will work against them and that's not healthy at all so to have a good relationship uh, with them and and it's important they are better skiers than us so they they are probably more experts on themselves and on on how to ski fast than we are we we can ask questions we can uh, sort of know the history uh, and uh, help them make a map uh, uh, in how to succeed but they are the experts and uh, I think um, some coaches might put themselves in, selves in the center and be uh, most experts but uh, if uh, the athletes are better skiers, <laughs> as far as I can see it. So, what do you think about the decision of Pellegrino and De Fabiani to work with the Russian team? Uh, do you think it could be not only for Norway but for other nations, the, the of other countries in the future? I think it's uh, uh, very good. Uh, Marcus is a good coach and a, and a uh, extraordinary coach. Uh, nice guy uh, and and for Pellegrino and for Fabiani uh, they they need to to be better they need to be pushed uh, in in training of course uh, and the Russians can give them push and probably the Russians can learn something from Pellegrino as well he is one of the best sprinters uh, for the last 10 years uh, is it's extraordinary skier so uh, they will only do it harder for us uh, I'm guessing but we, we have we are, we have are lucky we, we have very many excellent skiers in our team so we, we, you will always be pushed uh, in the Norwegian team uh, and but it's not the same for maybe for Italy because in sprint Pellegrino is he's the best in everything uh, so he needs to be beaten he needs to be uh, yeah pushed to be better uh, and I think he can get that in uh, uh, the Kramer group the last question is not about uh, cross country I know you love uh, Italian football uh, and you love an Italian team can you tell us Forza Milan <laughs> Uh, why why you like Milan? I uh, I grew up in the uh, in the middle of uh, the 80s and early 90s uh, and my best friend he 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 was a Milan supporter and sort of then I, I uh, he told me you should be a Milan supporter and okay I, I, then I became that and of course, AC Milan was so good uh, in that period, and uh, so I've been a lot of times at to San Siro. Uh, last time I was there, I saw uh, actually I saw uh, Milan Juventus. Uh, of course, Juventus won 2-0, but uh, yeah, uh, it's many years ago.